Alrighty, get a class, lonely in here, but you know, you make do. So the question we often get asked with these storage solutions is when you're designing something that's not a rectangular or square box shape, how do you figure out what angle to cut your joints on? Now, this is where we get to do a little bit of maths, and I know you all love it when I say we get to do real maths in tech, but I like to call it PAIN, Practical Application in Numeracy, a good acronym, right? But, you know, hopefully it's not too pain. So I'll grab a sample. When you want to make, this is a semi-complete one, okay? Uh, how many sides is that? Eight octagonal storage solution, okay? And it's not a bad job that's coming together, but how do you actually know what angle to cut all of these joints on? Well, I'm gonna show you here for the next time you need to do this. So number one, let's whip up a little concept, okay? Uh, when you're drawing something up, anything can fit inside a box. So if we just start with a box of that shape, okay? Can't see the lines that great, but you'll figure it out. I'm gonna then sort of turn this into an octagonal box. And all I'm doing is copying and pasting lines on my drawing, okay? I'll rub out some out here. Yeah, okay, I'll put there. Yeah. All right, cool, we've got basically the shape of our octagonal box. Well, I was drawing this on some paper and presenting my concept. I just a dark outline. I can stand out, put a shadow out here and all that, but anyway, this is what we got. Now, if we were to look at this from the top, okay, and I'll draw that down here. Let's just say that this octagon can fit inside a circle, okay? All right, bingo. All circles would have a center point. There's my center point. And now, if I were to draw lines and turn these into pots, this pie, not pie as in three, four, one, four, but into eight little segments of a circle, I could start going through and figuring out the angles. So maybe I'll try this in a different color. Hmm, let's try green. Let's get the green so that's in down. Now, we know there's 360 degrees in a revolution. We know that there are eight pieces. So this is where I'd throw to you guys and go, all right, what's 360 divided by eight? A little bit of awkward science here, or you're all going, is it 40? No, it's not 40, is it 50, okay. I don't know, so I'll give you a little bit of time to think about that. Well, let's try some magic. Aha! 360 divided by 8 equals 45. Ooh, I'm sure that's what you guessed. Okay, that means that each one of these little corners can be 45, 45, 45, 45. Look, you can't really read it up that close anyway, so let's just do it in black and we'll do it with a little circle to, stick, to identify that all of those are 45 degrees. Yeah, okay, we can see that reasonably well. So now let's just take one of these triangles, all right? And let's put that triangle up here. All right, we know that that's an isosceles triangle. So this angle is 45 degrees. And there's 180 degrees in uh, all the three angles of the triangle. That would mean that 180 minus 45, which lets you speed this one up slightly, is equal to 185. Which means that these two, let's put a cross in there, these two corners need to equal 135 degrees. Okay, so obviously here we do 135 divided by two is gonna equal, and I'll probably hand it over to you here and go, oh, well, hang on, there's a five in that, so what do I do there? Uh, but if we go, all right, half of 100 is 50, half of, let's say, 36, let's just round down a little bit, half of 36 is 18, 50 plus 18 is 68 degrees, okay? So what that tells us there is that that's 68 degrees, that's 68 degrees, so if we now go, all right, well, over here, that's the piece of, or well, the segment of timber that I need, I know that that angle there and that angle there needs to be 68 degrees. But how do I mark that out? All right, this is where I'm just gonna quickly whip over to my scrap box. And I'm back. And I've grabbed a little off-cut apply, and all I really need is something here with a straight edge, okay, to start with. So, I've got a nice straight edge there, okay? 
Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go, all right, well, from the corner down here, let's just mark, there's more. I'm now going to line my protractor up and go, all right, from that straight edge there to the corner, I'm going to come up 10, 20 feet, 68 degrees, and I'll put a dot there. All right? Woo! From that dot, I'm going to do this on the table, but hey, let's go and go here. Up, good. Stay still. Bingo. So that is at 68 degrees. Okay. I'll put a little shape on it here, just for the sake of it, because make it look like an arrow. And now I'm going to go quickly cut this out. And I'm back. And what I've come back with now is a little template. Where's my camera? Ooh, camera. Zoom it. Zoom it. See it. Maybe I should just hold it still. But anyway, just there, that says 68 degrees. Now, so this angle here goes, all right, well, if I line this up on an edge, any edge, okay, that'll really help me do my marking out. So I've just grabbed another little random off cut of timber. Grab a couple of tools here, and I'll check a few things. So first up, we'd need to check that our edge is squared off. So let's just line that up there. All right, nice and square. Okay, we can square it across the top as well. Let's get a little pencil line. I don't normally do this in mid-air, I normally do it on the table. All right, so from the top, there's my 90 degree line, okay? Come on camera, pick this up. How close did I put it? Yeah, there we go, we can see it. All right, cool. So now if I put my little template on top and just line it up flush, there we go, you can sort of see it back here. And now I can just trace here to get my 68 degree angle, which I think you can see, yeah, there we go, 68 degree angle, cool. I can then get my tri-square again to mark that out across the, the face over there. Something marked out like that. I can repeat on the other side, again, just lining it up flush, making sure I meet up with the lines. And we're flush, and there we go. And I might just color in the waist so you can see that there's all the waste that I would cut off. And now it's just a matter of going, all right, well, I've got this piece. And I know I need to cut off and go, all right, here's my inside edge. Here's my inside edge and my inside edge. If my box was going to have the inside edge segments at 100 mils, I'd just go mark my point over here and go, I use the rule to measure, but I use the tools to mark. I know that this has to go out on a 68 degree angle. And I just keep repeating the steps. Try square down okay and i normally say look, leave leave three mil space or a little bit of space in between so let's just leave a little bit of space there okay because obviously when you're cutting something the timber doesn't just magically disappear all right yep and you can see there now doing well okay i'll be able to cut those down and a little bit of tap on the disc sander and have this perfectly cut uh to the angles i need Let's do that. Okay, now, here's where we've got nicely cut out. You can see that the angle there, 68 degrees, 68 degrees, both sides. So if I now go, well, hang on, if I start joining these together, I'm going to start getting those angles that I need. Now, you can start to cheat a little bit if you don't want to use that little, um, uh, uh, temporary forgotten what it's called. Um, we can just trace one successful piece and using that as our template oh, there we go template okay we can go through and trace this repeat and we'll get another piece back and so on and so on so we just go and keep repeating those steps uh template reuse cut over and over and over again until we have eight of these shapes so in the next vid, I might show you how to start putting these things together. And I hope you're liking these guys and catch you guys.